Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. counselors. Hey, happy happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It's week 54 here at camp. And it may be a beautiful day here at the campground for you. The mess hall had fresh eggs. The raccoons were behaving. You may have even gotten a wink from Sandwich. But our poor counselor, Jonathan, has had such a morning. We had a different direction for the show, you guys. But after what happened today, we thought, you know what? We have to bring this to the camp committee, our campers at large. And this is going to be Jonathan's start to the show because he has a quite, quite, he's had quite a day. You want to take it over, babe? Yes. I wake up this morning at 7 a.m. to a disturbing message that my Instagram account has been suspended. For for a person in our field, this this is our D Day. Yeah, this was not champagne problems. This was like a world crumbling event that is occurring to me. Why me? So I'm calling my manager. It's four o'clock. He lives in LA. I'm like, of course, blowing up his phone. Sorry about that, Zach. But I just feel like the entire world around me is crumbled. Yeah, I woke up at seven thirty, you guys. And I like look over. He's on his phone. He is literally weeping. You were. You no. I, to be honest, because you were in such an anxiety and stressful state that you were and only to be described as a weeping. I didn't want to wake you, but I was like, but I kind of want to wake him. So I just made a lot of noise in the room until he rolled over. And I was like, oh, well, while you're awake, can you c- c- please give me your condolences? Yeah, I feel like I wish you would have just woke me up. I would have been there with you. You were only up for a half an hour before I awoke, but like I would have helped. So we'll try. <sighs> I know. It is. No, guys, I, I know we're just being, it's silly, right? Because you're like, it's an Instagram account who faking cares. We all got one. No, but this is really is our career, guys. So like, let us just, let us just have this moment, okay? Like, stop laughing okay because poor jonathan was over here thinking that his world was over and not just that but i'm like in between two contractually obligated advertisements on my instagram account am i going to be sued is yep. this a suable situation because you posted one two days before we recorded it, while recording this guys right so a couple whatever so you were you were you posted one two days ago and then now you're supposed to post another one in a couple days yeah and i was like oh my god i'm out of commission i can't do it i've simply retired this is it for me i'm checking out i know and it's really funny so a little backstory this is not funny but it is uh, sorry <laughs> a little backstory here campers so do you want to tell them what happened, like, symbolically, basically a year to this exact date? Oh, yeah. We were in Bali last year. And we've I think we've spoken about this briefly on the show, but it's time to refresh everybody. So I did a, I did a Trova trip, which is kind of like a trip where your followers can go on vacation with you. It was set up years ago. COVID happened. Things got pushed, whatever. So I did this amazing trip with a bunch of lovely ladies um, to Bali last year in September. Yeah, so it was like this week last year. Yeah, so it was a great trip, but we did this one excursion on the trip where we went to these like, um, uh, it was a temple. Well, let me set the scene for you guys. So like we're in this water temple, right? So the water is coming out of these like stone mouths, right? Mm-hmm. Were they people? Were they? Yeah, they, they looked like faces. So the, the the people there that were guiding us through this experience, like this experience, we wore these like, I think they were sarongs, is that mm-hmm. what they're called? These like fabric sarongs that they gave us. We were barefoot. You literally physically got into this fountain, probably waist deep. And what you would do is you would go up to this water coming out of this like carved face and you'd flush it over your face. And while you did that, you would almost manifest a goal or a dream. And you did it eight times in a row, switched to the other fountain and did it eight more times. Very spiritual, super exciting. If you're ever in Bali, it's a place that you really can like focus and center yourself. I know that sounds pretentious, but like just so you know, if you've ever considered going there, side note, the flight is the most expensive part. You can stay at like a five-star hotel there and it's like $100 USD a night. And there's food's amazing. We love it there. But you did this experience. We both did it. And the entire time you were really focusing on manifesting your career. Yes, and world peace and all that fun shit. Well, just to be too. honest, it was yeah, for like, you, course, and that's okay. Who cares? And that's why I just wanted to quit. I was working full time at a Catholic university and I wanted the fuck out. Okay. Is there anything wrong with that? Thank you. So 365 days later, which is today, 
I got struck with a suspended account. And the past year, you've gained from like 9,000 9, followers to like 300,000 followers. And we've always said, like, obviously you've put in the work, but we were always like, hey, that magic Bali water. Yeah. Hey, and that's she, what we've always had. Well, she giveth and she, she taketh away. She tooketh away the rug right from under my very dirty feet. And I was, uh, there's nothing we could do. There was literally nothing we could do. We uh, appealed it. My manager is still asleep. Your manager asleep, who was kind enough to try to help us out with this situation. So you are like, let's get out of the house. Let's walk for a little coffee. Yeah, because I was like, you're you're literally in full panic mode and there's nothing we can do. Everyone that can help us right now is three hours in a different behind us in a different time zone. So let's get out of the house. The least we can do is work on our fitness and get hot and tight in case we have to flip career paths here. So we walked to get a lovely coffee and the entire time you were okay. But then I remember getting to this one corner where we were near the park and I look over at you and this is you. You were like, <laughs> like heart racing, can't get the breath out of his mouth and he's twitching his fingers. And I was like, Jonathan, Whatever happened was a mistake. You didn't say anything inappropriate. You haven't done anything wrong. You're a valued accountant to everybody. You're going to get it back. I need you to just really rein in the breath control here. And let's talk about that for one second. Because yeah. there are accounts that use our pictures. Like there's one account that uses all my pictures but uses your name. It's very bizarre. But we, we've had multiple instances where people have been like, hey, this account is a fake account and are following the people you're following. And I have like personal friends who started following them back. I'm like, hey, that's not me. That's a fake account. I reported them as fake like two days ago. Mm -hmm. I did report one account that was clearly using all of my pictures saying that it was me. And I said, hey, this account is pretending that it's me and it's not me. And I get a message back from Instagram saying they were like, sorry, we can't do anything about it. And the account is still up. And then there's me being me posting every day. Like Instagram has my banking information. They've given me paychecks before. And then I get suspended. Exactly. So I just knew something was up. It was fishy. And if you're listening, we have connects at Instagram. They're all in a different time zone. So like you can't mess with us for too long. So we ended up getting the coffee. We got a coffee and on the way back, you keep having somewhat of a religious experience. Do you want to Ever speak on that? Literally everything then became a sign to me. <laughs> I <laughs> if you're looking for signs, guys, you're going to find them. It's kind of like kind of fun. What was the first group of signs you were seeing? Um, I looked at my watch. It was 824. I was like four times two is eight. 824, my angel numbers. Sure, why not? And then we're walking you past. You can't just develop angel numbers in the moment. Oh, yes, you absolutely can. If you're look, if you're scrounging for anything <laughs> to lean on, <laughs> maybe my world was tumbling. These columns came down. I had no. I was a castle <clears throat> on the sand. Oh, okay, okay. So then we're walking past a church, and this really sharply dressed man smoking a cigarette outside in like a three piece suit, maybe I mean, even a four piece. And it was like pastel green, and this was like it was like nine a.m. and it was like looking looking stunning. Yeah, and what I'm you? I'm looking down at the ground, groveling in self pity, and I do look up and I catch his eye, and he handsomely, invitingly smiled and said, "Good morning." And I said, good morning. And we walked past and I looked at you. I said, I think that was God. And then you turned around and said, he's gone. And then I looked around. He, he was not gone. He was gone. No, he, no, you're being stupid. You're just playing it up right now because we're on the podcast. You just like love to like make up these scenarios to like feed into your like, I don't know, your just, your silliness, which I thought this was all good. I thought this was the first moment in the first two hours of the day that you weren't sobbing, no, weeping. So I was like, okay, at least he's being playful now, which is good. We yeah, were, I, I had to. We were making movements. And then there was, so we saw church. Churches. We saw the pastors. Oh, and then we also saw those lovely women in the park who were handing out Bible Bible brochures. Yes, I approached with caution. I was going to take one, but um, instead of offering me a brochure, they just complimented our coffees. They were like, oh, an iced coffee because it was cold this morning. And we, we joked a little with the ladies and I said, I think... I think this is my calling. I think God was looking at you and saying, come back, come back to the church. We've missed you. And if you really, because when we even left to get coffee, you started praying. And I said, how funny is it that people suddenly find religion in moments when they need it the most? Like when things are good, you're like, I don't need to go to church. But the minute something goes bad, you're like, God, I'm and still... <laughs> I'm here, God. I always was here. It's like, get out of here. You're so fake. And God, she's up there in the clouds and she's like, well, 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 haven't heard from you since the 90s. I'm like, I'm sorry, I swear. What you also were seeing white feathers. Oh my God, I was seeing white, three white feathers and a dead rat. 
but we will look right past that one. I feel like if you search three white feathers and a dead rat, that's some sort of allegory. Yeah. That, that's that been written before. Al Gore. So we um, come back home. You're no, on, wait, no. What do you want to say? I I'm was sorry so, I jumped the story. It's okay. I was still weeping and, and, and wallowing. So you said, you know what? Let's go to the dog park. So oh. you took my pretty little perky tight ass to the dog park. To see dogs playing in a dog park is one of life's simple pleasures that you don't have to pay for. And uh, when I was in the suburbs, I didn't really see dog parks like I do in New York. It is very true. And it's really one of the perks of living in the city is is to experience a lovely heaping of dogs, just being jovial. And at 8.30 in the morning when we were walking past the dog park, like that's prime time. I think a lot of the pet parents work from home and they're like, let's get one last burst of energy out before we start the day. So it was packed. It was. And it really calms my nerves. You took a picture so I could remember it always. You looked so handsome in that picture, too. Thank you. I will be collecting compliments all day, campers. I need it. This is my time of need. So we d- then do we go home? Is that the next part of the story? And then we went home and have no choice but to live an unplugged lifestyle. Yeah, but wait, th- like catch them up. Like what? What happened after all this? Oh, I got my account back. I did. There it is, you guys. So it, how many hours after all of this? Yeah, guys, this all happened before 10 a.m., okay? It was a morning. So what was it before 10 a.m.? Do you know what the timestamp was when you got your account back? Um, Roughly It was around like 10. 10. So it was about four hours yeah. of drama. And what did they say? The verbiage was so funny from Instagram. Yeah, but they're like, we apologize. We got it wrong. They said, we got it wrong. I'm like, first of all, you did. And I like that you're owning that. I like that. It's playful. We got yeah, it wrong. It is because they, I technically really only had till the end of the day. They were like, we will permanently delete your account. I know. How alarmist of them to be like, you have 24 hours to react or you're going to explode. It's like, okay. I also calm do, down. <laughs> do just want to say I'm thankful that like we have a team. Like I have a team that can get my account back for me. So like just going to put that out there. Like I realize that if. I didn't have a team, it would probably be harder. Yeah, but you didn't even need your team because they knew they were wrong. I am aware of that, but I mean, other people who have been like wrongly reported or what, I still don't know what the case was. I don't like, I don't really comment much on people's videos. And when I do, I never swear. On my Zillow videos, um, I I cover up the address because there was one incident where people showed up to my house. So I was like, I never want to put anybody through that because these are people's homes, not just for entertainment purposes. Yeah, I, I wish they would have told you why. Why? why. I don't know. It yeah. is it is interesting. Guys, this is something that it, we're never going to know. And if we have anybody listening from Meta and you want to do some deep diving, we would love that. Thank um, you. I'm sure someone's going to lie and email us and make up something stupid, but... It'll be funny. But in these quiet hours, aka one hour after we got back from the walk while Jonathan waited for his account to come back on, he looked at me on the couch and he said, you know what? I'm just going to live my unplugged lifestyle. As if he doesn't have access to other accounts and the internet. But of course, you guys know he's obsessed with his explore page. So what was the boy to do without his explore page? Literally, I was freaking out. You're like, how will el- how else will I get a curated grid of dogs, hot guys, and weird houses? Yes, and stained glass art. Oh, I love. That's something I would really consider taking a class in. Yeah. So, hey, that could be one of the jobs because then we discussed what kind of jobs we would take on because, you know, at at this point, I was steadfast on the fact that I was my Done. career was over. Yeah, you were. So you really I were. thought, you know, in this unplugged lifestyle, what would my job be in medieval times? Why did you jump immediately to the medieval times in terms of being unplugged? Like, did it was that the was that the threshold of no electricity? Uh, yeah, they didn't have plugs. So there's this like thing going viral right now on like online. I don't even know the origins of it, but everyone's asking like straight men how often they think of um, the Roman Empire. Have you seen that whole thing? No. Like, so I'll ask you the question because I think by the time this airs, it'll be a little bit more relevant or maybe pe- this will never, people ne- will never understand this. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Not usually. I've never thought of it once in my entire life. But I think straight men are coming out being like, oh, often. And it's like, really? Is this a common experience between 
straight men. Well, we don't really have any straight listeners, I don't think. Well, straight well, male listeners. Well, don't, maybe we do. Don't say that because we we are open. We're open to everybody. I, we just yeah, it's not Kim common Kim, here. Right. There are leprechauns. There are unicorns here at mm-hmm. Camp Shady Birch. If you see a straight man at Camp Shady Birch, you welcome them because you don't know when you'll see another one. It's very rare here. Um, but all that to say is, so the Roman Empire, because I am us, I am a historian here. I am the camp historian. Yeah. Roman Empire came before um, the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages. Correct. Oh, oh, uh, you're asking me. You're yeah, I think so. Right. Sure. I'm just yeah. So correct answer. I that was the correct answer. Oh. I was testing you. Okay. So we're gonna go through a couple jobs that we think we would have done well in the Middle Ages. We love a list. Or God the medieval it. times. Is that the same thing? Medieval. Yeah, that's the mid in medieval is middle ages this is the this is the most eloquent conversation people have ever heard two men have on a microphone it is we're gonna get nominated for a grammy yeah <laughs> a grammy Wait, you know how i love to speak like that guys that's a really fun one to say in that accent grammy grammy grant it's giving yanny laurel yanny Laurel. Okay, we're going to start. Jonathan, should we go every other? Guys, you know we love to do this. Yeah, let's do every other. Take your sip. You're having chronic dry mouth, and that's totally okay. (laughs) I am. If you hear some, um, it's the medication I'm on. We'll talk about another day. I'm doing my best. Uh, You start. Okay, so these are some jobs that I would have uh, if I was around in the Middle Ages. So my first job I have is uh, an ostiary. What does that mean? Oh, come on. Thank you so much for asking. It is the doorman at the church. Wait, the man that we met today was an ossuary. I did not even think about that. He was in front of a church. He was welcoming us. He said, good morning. He looked incredible. This is all coming together. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking the freak out. And another one of the job things that they need to do is ring the bell. I can check a door. I'm like basically the bouncer for Christ. Wow. And ringing the bell. Ring my bell. So was, 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 um... Was that hunchback bitch? Was he an ostiary? Oh, I don't know. He did not do door. There's no conf- way he was doing door. I have a confession. You hate the movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. So any of my Disney people out there, the fear of the man in that movie with the weird kind of bob, and he's he literally has a bob, and he's like from the Catholic Church, I think arguably he might be the most terrifying Disney villain they ever created because he's not like mythical. He's definitely soaked in history, and he is genuinely like a depiction of like the worst kind of person from that time period. Like he was real. He's so scary. The Patreon girlies know that you already talked about this because you talked about the guy from Tarzan too. Oh, what is his name? I always forget it. I want to say Var Jack. Clayton. But that's, yeah. So I I'm so sorry to any of our campers out there named Clayton. I think Clayton is the most vicious name you could ever give a child i think it's cute i don't i really believe it's it's soaked in dark-sided energy i i'm sorry it's i tainted don't tainted for you for me it's tainted and there might be a name for you that's tainted clayton to me it it really gives me dark energy i don't like it. it's giving taint um Someone okay well like, my kid is literally named Kate and not clayton i'm never listening to the podcast again no and to that i apologize okay yeah. i'm sorry camper <laughs> I like the name Clayton for the permanent record. Um, <laughs> so what their job is at the door is to make sure that no unbaptized people are coming in, which is kind of confusing because it's like, don't you get baptized in a church? They were giving out little red leather necklaces back then. And they said, baptize bitch. And that you only got that if you were baptized. So that's how they, he would know, oh, that's a baptized bitch, let him in. And if you didn't have the necklace, it was like, I can't let you in. Like Scarlet it's, Ladder. That is such a fun bit. Being like, are you seriously? I wish I could let you in, but like we're at capacity right now. Like come back in 10. <laughs> wink, wink. When my boss isn't looking. It is like the bitch of the medieval times is the ossuary. Yes, true. But um, on lostkingdom.net, which is non-sponsor, but we are looking for sponsorships. They said perhaps a less than moral ossuary might require a bribe to let a character into church, temple, or shrine. That would be doubly true after hours when perhaps your character might be up to no good. I don't know what that quite means, but basically I am accepting bribes in the form of rubies. Yes, the, the, the I don't want to say the Catholic church, but the Christian church in that like time frame was so corrupt because at any point, like they were constantly being like, 
it was almost like giving like levels of like holiness and like at any point you could like level up to be even better before you went to heaven. So like in this time frame, they were constantly like, like bribing people being like, oh, but if you pay a little bit more, like you'll get a better spot in heaven. It was like so chaotic back then. Like the church is corrupt now. The church was soaked in corruption back then, especially in the monetary division. But separation of church and state, you know how that goes. Roll the clip. Yeah. Okay. So say roll the eyes. What? But also the clip. What what's your job? Um, I think it would be a great tavern keeper, wow. aka town bartender. Hey. Come in here, come get some me, come get some booze, and just vibe out with me. Apparently, I did some research too, because I love to read. The tavern keeper was essentially like almost like the innkeeper too. And the innkeeper was like a really lucrative position back then because people were constantly like just traveling around, like trying to figure it out. Like no one was ever staying put back then. They were like, everywhere sucked. So they were like, let me try over here. And they're like, well, this sucks too. So the tavern, they were made so much money at the tavern in the end that they would be like, they'd have to like pay a lot of taxes because they knew they were making a lot of money. And you had to constantly make sure that all your people were like entertained and like, like casting, like, I don't know, the musicians and like clean the rooms. Like it, it's basically the exact same thing as it is today. Yeah. But just with like one of those funky, like, old timey guitars that was like diddling ding 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 yeah i know what you're talking about. a mandolin a mandolin a mandalorian i don't know that's not our our side of the universe okay i think that's great that what would you serve at the bar what's mead on deck? and cheese what about food oh for food i would ho um a haggis <laughs> lots of haggis <laughs> and old stale bread and maybe some corn for the kids popped of course. Why is that always me? Like, anytime I need to do something like crotchety, that's the only accent I can do. I forgot kids existed back then. Yeah. What? It, that almost sucked. It's like, sucked. They, so boring. They probably had, that's probably when they invented the hoop and the, and the <laughs> oh, the, with the stick, with the, the stick and hoop. Honestly, if you're going to give me a stick and a hoop right now, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try it. Let's talk about that. It looks a little playful. Okay. So we're going to go to the park today with our second hoop. We need to find a second hoop first. Okay. What are you calling your, your bar? Uh, listen, don't put me on the spot. Oh, right. I was going to say Porter's Porter. Oh, that's my next job, but we'll talk about that next. Oh, okay. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. Okay. So then my next job is going to be a farrier. Are you familiar with the term? I've been called that before. <laughs> So a farrier is someone who took care of horses' hooves, in particular, putting on horseshoes for the animals. What a specific job. Yeah. Do you like horses like that? So I actually used to ride horses. Thank you for asking. And I was using um, the horseshoe pick and I did scrape. Oh, oh, let me tell you about this horse. His name is Oki. He was an old crotchety bitch. That's a great name for a horse, Oki. I have a picture. I think I literally last night showed you a picture of me riding Oki. Where was I? We were sitting on the couch watching the Playboy murders. That's a good show. We'll talk about that another time. And I was riding Oki the horse. He was old. He was the oldest in the stable. And he would eat the other horse's tails like that were walking in front of him. And I really couldn't like get him under control. And he was like the crotchety bitch. Nobody wanted him in the stable. I was like, I'll take him. So of course I'm taking such him. a martyr, I'm such a martyr through and through to this very day. And, um, there was one time my uncle came from, um, Pennsylvania to go see me in Illinois. And I was doing, I don't remember what it was, but it, not a competition, but it was something like that, like a showcase. I don't know. But in the middle of it, Oki started peeing. Do you know what it's like? riding a horse when it starts peeing. Yeah, it's basically putting on the fire hose. And it's like the entire stadium staring at you. I felt like I was peeing. I was also like eight years old. I was like, this is so embarrassing. At eight, that is really, it's like not your fault, but at eight, that's like, how do you not internalize that? You know? Exactly, exactly. What so a fucker. I had some discourse with Oki and then I'm taking him back to the stable. Our responsibilities were grooming them and I was taking the pick under his hoof and he had a sensitive hoof and I knew this. So I was trying to be careful. I thought I was being careful and I wasn't. And I got kicked in the head. Why did I say V? I got kicked in the head. I don't know, but this is starting to add up for a what? couple of things I have been questioning about you. Don't. Do you think Oki's still alive? God, I probably not. Good. Because oh. he was, he's an asshole. So <laughs> he was an Listen, asshole. Listen, just because he's an animal doesn't mean he's not an asshole. Animals can be assholes too. Yeah, but I do think I would be really good at that job because now I'm like extra super cautious. Well, you also have work experience and like that's the most valuable thing you can have in the medieval times. Yeah, and they're always checking Indeed back then. Yeah, what was it called? Ye old Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> with an E at the end. I'm feeling like clever today. You're so clever every day. So what's your next job? Clever boy. I think it would be Porter. My last name is Porter. A Porter historically has been someone who moves goods. A hauler, if you will. The original U-Haul. And when you shake your ass, you are constantly moving goods. Exactly. And I think, hey, I am going to go back to my roots and really support the family name and the family crest. The Do you, f- you know what our family crest looks like? What? It's like stained, you know, like that classic stained glass. And it, it's it's like, it's literally oh, so old, but it's just like a cardboard box with tape on it. Shut up. It <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Amazon smile. <laughs> You're so dumb. That's it. Okay, what's your next one? Wait, I didn't know that a port, well, I, that makes sense from port to port. But in my head, I think porter, I think beer, I think mead. And I think your prior, your prior job. Yeah, so like that's like when poor people um, like back then, like, they're if they didn't if they were like really poor they didn't even get a last name they just like their last name was their job oh yeah so i think that's why my last name is porter because porter is like a very old job interesting hey i'm on my back the world's been on my back for family generations so my last job that i think i would be good at is a piss profit i what is it john it's like hey <laughs> like come on you, you don't that? know about a piss <laughs> exactly what you wanted let's hear it and i'm being dead ass i'm not making this up they were also called water scri- scriggers probably mispronouncing that but i don't really care but they were doctors who diagnosed disease from the sight smell and taste of a patient's urine why would you want to do that like because you like the name because you really want to do that are you just being silly right now no i don't think i really want to do it i just think it would be so funny to be like i'm a piss prophet and like i would get that as my twitter handle i okay yeah blue check i also feel like too it was called it's called the piss prophet it's called the piss prophet yeah so they were calling it piss back then uh in the 1600s like a couple hundred years after it had originated they were calling it piss back then and they even had a thing <laughs> i'm not so kidding funny. They, i'm not even kidding they had this thing it was called a wee wheel and it was what the doctor would use and it had um you would pee into like a bottle like a clear bottle and then you would give it to the piss prophet and he would hold it up to the wee wheel and he would see basically it was like a uh, ferris wheel of you piss you have indigestion well it was like a chart oh it wasn't like a ferris wheel of piss that would be quite the title for this episode um but it was basically like if it's really dark they're like hey drink some water and they were like if it tastes really sweet they were like uh you might have diabetes oh my like god that. Well, I really enjoy finding out that the word piss has such um, old origins. I thought that was like a new term. And now I'm really laughing and thinking about the lords and the ladies being like, the joke piss. He pisses me off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I like how old it is. Yeah, I do too. Um, for the record, I'm not into water sports, but I think I'd be good at it. No one's believing that statement after that. It's very true. Account. I should probably consider editing this out. So what's your last job that you think you would like to do while unplugged in the Middle Ages? I don't know if this is good. I can I, I, I don't even I don't even care about these. I just want to read the words. Because Please. right now I'm looking at three different job positions and I don't want to do any of them, but I just want to say them out loud because I like the way they sound. I just said I was a best prophet. All right. Cobbler. Okay. I don't want to make shoes with a knife. I'll hurt myself. But I love to say, I'm the local cobbler. I think you would be good at it. I'm terrible whittling. All right. Next is <laughs> the local grocer slash merchant. And, and you're they, made for that. No, they literally wrote grocer on there. And I was like, okay, my origins again. And then the last one is a pewterer. A pewterer. Oh. Um. I've always had an affinity for pewter. I like the way it sounds. I like the way it looks. I like a pewter tchotchke. So pewterer is a smith working only with pewter. So I am done talking about medieval terms, but I want to end it with pewterer. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements, campers. Before we jump into the news of today... We do have a little housekeeping. Well, it's actually not, but I'm going to talk about it. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but NBC News posted an article this week about that guy in Peru who had that mummy in the delivery bag at that weird historical site that I covered months ago. So once again, I just want to bring to the campers' attention that we are sharing the news before major news outlets pick it up. We are on the forefront of fringe news media, and I'm just really proud because no one's giving us our flowers, so I'm delivering a bouquet to us today. 
today. That is kind of crazy because that literally was months ago when you talked about it, right when it happened. Yeah. And I have seen it a couple of times pop up and I'm like, why is this popping up now? This this has been happened. Yeah, it's got to be a slow news week. So they're looking at our podcast to bring them the news. It Honestly, slow news week. It I can, is. I can validate that. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Morning Announcements. This is the part of the show where we share news with you guys that you might have missed that NBC clearly hasn't covered yet that they're going to steal from us later. Mm. Um, some good stories this week. Jonathan, do you want to go first? No, why don't you go first? Okay, no, I'll go first. Yeah, I need you to go first, please. Okay. <laughs> My mouth is getting really... Okay. So, please. so my article is coming from Business Insider, and it's by Hannah Geta, hon. You better get a hon. You better get a hon, Hannah. And it is titled, Portugal Town Flooded by Nearly 3 Million Bottles Worth of Red Wine. Oh. I know you've seen this, right? You've seen the video. I saw The video is unbelievable. Okay. So let me tell you guys a little bit about this, all right? So hundreds of thousands of gallons of red wine flowed through this small town in Portugal after two tanks filled with red wine released the town was sal oh god i don't know how to say this uh, so i'm gonna skip it i'm sorry yeah, it's okay don't worry the portuguese people will forgive you starting with me um thank you so it, the small town is home to 2,000 residents and it's located about 150 miles north of lisbon it really looked gorgeous in the video it's very like cliffside lisboa Portugal. yeah you mm -hmm. know it looks it looks gorgeous especially with wine flooding down the street and that video is crazy did it not look like splash mountain so the vat of wine at the la vera distillery burst due to structural failure which then caused a second one to burst so it's like the domino effect oh shit and it was 2.2 million liters or 600,000 gallons of red wine flowed through the city. Guess how long it was for? How long? Over an hour. Oh, so it was just like actively flowing like a river. For Yeah. That's a lot of wine. For over an hour. So residents were then, obviously everybody's freaking out, but residents are worried that the wine was going to contaminate the local river. But the local fire department managed to block the flow and divert it um, into a nearby field. And then they started like f taking buckets and taking it to like a water uh, waste facility. You know, firefighters, like you, they don't know what the day is going to bring them. You really don't. And that's the allure of it, I feel. Truly. Um, that's a job that I don't think I could take on in the medieval times. Yeah, definitely not. Because you didn't have the, the hoses or anything. Yeah, that's true. Um, so anyway, the <laughs> distillery apologized for the incident in a statement um, and the damage that it caused. And the winemaker said that there were no injuries that had been reported. And there was really not a lot of property damage, though I don't know if I buy that. Um, somebody's basement was flooded, like their cellar was flooded. To me, I just see that as a refill. <laughs> and um, yeah, but that's about it. But it reminded me of, have you ever heard of the great um, London beer flood? It was 1814, like the same thing happened with beer. And that was terrible. How about this? In Boston, 1919, the great molasses flood. I have heard of that. That one was scary. Yeah. Um, they sound, they say great, but it's like honestly really terrible. A lot of people died. But anyway, uh, <laughs> nobody died in this story. Yeah, maybe cirrhosis of the liver from the people who have it all in their basement. Yeah. Oh, my God. Also, the distillery then went out of their way to be like, and don't worry, the town's not going to smell because we have great quality wine. Bitch. Yeah, that PR intern was working overtime. I can't believe they were like, don't worry, the town's not going to smell. Is it smelling today? Because it was a hot one there in Lisboa. <laughs> anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. What have you got for us? Love that. Thank you. Okay, so my article is from the Washington Post by Kathy Free. Um, the title of the article is, Please Write Me. She scribbled on a random egg in 1951. Someone just did. Okay, I'm in. Buckle in, bitches. This is a really good one. I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. So Mary Foss Starn is 92. And back in the 1950s, several of her friends were packing eggs into cartons at an Iowa factory when they hatched a goofy plan to liven up their work day. So they were like, hey, girls, I have an idea. Let's take some eggs and we're going to scribble our name and our address. And we're just going to send them off and say, like, please write me on the egg. Because they knew that these eggs from this Iowa egg processing plant were going to be like sent to the East Coast, aka New York City. And they were like, we hate the corn Iowa state over here. We're over. This is so boring. 
hopefully like at the end of this at the end of it all maybe we'll get a pen pal out of exciting new york city Mm -hmm. they were super excited so they hatch up this plan they send them all out nothing ever happens i love hatching up the plan like come on wordplay i know it's so cute so her entire life she like tells this story to her kids and like her grandkids. Like it's like her pride and joy. She's like, look guys, Gam Gam was crazy. And like nothing had happened, but 72 years later, she finally got an answer. So she was like sitting in her house with her daughter, who's like older, obviously. And her daughter got a message from their cousin, like in far away Iowa being like, Hey, this is your mom's name like somebody found the egg and i'm sure a lot of you are like really confused like how could this have happened there was this guy in 1951 his name was miller richardson and he found the egg while he was like living on staten Staten island and he was like whoa this is like really freaking cool so like way back then yeah he found it in 1951 this guy and he was like an art collector like a collector of curiosities so he thought it was really cool so he like tried to preserve it and eventually like the egg did like petrify from the inside out so it was like a little lighter definitely had some weight to it but like everything kind of dried out from the inside out and then like 20 years after that his neighbor like is there his name is john amalfa Malfatano. so he's in the house and he's like helping out miller whatever whatever and then they come across this egg and he's like oh like what's this all about and he was like it's crazy i found this like a long time ago like why don't you keep it so he does. Why didn't he write? I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, why didn't they write then? Did they say? I don't know why. He just says when I asked him about it, he said he he kept it because of the writing on it. But oh. why didn't he ever write to the writing? I don't know. But he didn't write. So this new guy that like helped him like find it in the house, he ends up being gifted it. And he like initially like goes on Google like back like 20 years ago and like searches her name, can't find anything. So he's like, whatever, I'm going to keep it in my China cabinet in this like egg case thing that he had like the ceramic thing whatever he forgets about it then all these years later he's on this facebook group called weird and wonderful secondhand finds that just need to be shared and he was like this is so crazy i like trying to think of something to share on this facebook group because he he thinks it's so fun so he posts the egg he shares here's something you don't see every day it's an egg from 1951 egg is still inside though petrified he wrote adding Mary Fossey's name or Mary Foss's name and message. Wonder if she might still be alive. Try to locate her, but came up empty. So the post goes viral on this Facebook group. Everyone's sharing it. Everyone's talking about it. That's how the cousin found it. The cousin contacts the daughter. The daughter shares the mom. They get in contact. By the end of the day, he's on the phone with Mary. He's like, hey, Mare. Mare's like a little older. I'm sorry. She's like 92. So she's like not being like really playful about it. Yeah. She's almost like not believing it. I think she's just like an older woman now. But she said at the end of the call, she was like, this is so crazy. Like, I finally got the pen pal that I always wanted. Oh. I know. So they're trying to see if like a local history, like historical society will take the egg. Because he's like, I'm not going to like get rid of the egg. But like if a historical society wants to like preserve this story, then I will definitely give it away. But um, she said that she's happy to have a new friend and she finally has her pen pal. It just only took 72 years. Oh, that's cute, though. I know. I like that he, like, couldn't find her. And then through the power of Facebook, 20 years later, they found her. See, social media isn't all bad, you guys. There can be some great little stories out of it. That is really cute. I just think it's crazy. So the first, this was the second guy who had the egg who ended up contacting, right? He wasn't the original finder. Yeah, like the first guy should have found it, but like think about it in the 50s, like he probably was like, I'm not wasting a stamp on this bitch. Like I'm just oh, gonna keep Oh, true, it. maybe that's why he did. Like you couldn't just like search people back then. And even when the new guy found it, the internet wasn't what it was today. He was unplugged. Yeah, he was in his unplugged journey. So this essentially was a story from the medieval times, you guys. What does that egg look like? Because I haven't seen a picture of it. I want to know what it looks um, like. It looks like a typical egg. We'll oh. post it, obviously, on Facebook. I mean, on um, ooh, Facebook on the brain. On the YouTube <laughs> and Instagram. It's like a typical egg. It's giving a little bit of, um, like, tan. Um, gray cursive that she had, I thought, you know? And it was still legible. Oh, well, that's sweet. I'm very happy for her. Me too. Eggs on the brain. Hatching up great stories here every day at Camp Shady Birch. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. I'm going to go first. I'm ready for it. 
as per usual, here I go. So uh, the other day we were at the grocery store and there was a woman in front of us and we were in a bit of a rush and I get it. Like people have to do their own thing and, and do their own journey, but she was so rude and she had absolutely no respect for the people around her, including the employees. She was a nightmare. I was like literally pacing back and forth trying to collect myself because I was like, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna fucking say something like a bitch, you know? Exactly. But she was waiting on a dollar rain check for her chopped meat, which I get it. These are trying times for everybody, but she was wearing Dior and Tory Burch. Yeah, and every movement from the groceries to the, the scanner to the cart to pulling the meat back out to get rescanned, everything was just so incredibly slow. And she could tell that the line was forming and it didn't matter what was happening in anyone else's world. It only mattered what was her stupid fucking coupon? Girl, I will Venmo you $10 if you just leave. I was literally about to like pay her to just to just go. She and, was taking her dandy time. And I, I feel like I don't think this wasn't a person I could tell. And maybe I'm wrong here, but like I'm going to be a bitch. I maybe she needed that extra two dollars. And if that's the case, I'm sorry to even be saying this, but her energy was saying like, I got nothing else to do today and I'm going to like make everybody else wallow in whatever shit I'm dealing with because I'm a bitch. Let's just talk about supermarket etiquette at the local grocer. Okay, let's talk about if it. If you will. So the one other thing she didn't do is put the bar behind her groceries on the conveyor belt. Super annoying. I don't always do that. I'll just grab it for myself. No, you should always do it for somebody else. At the end of your thing, put your put the the divider put it behind yourself it's just it's polite well what if no one's behind you in line do it anyway okay i don't need to do it but i will from now on i'm sorry okay just a reminder for everybody i also saw her earlier in the store leaving her cart in the middle of the aisle while she has like one thumb up her ass and the other one's reaching for fucking suddenly salad oh i didn't know that she did that earlier yes she was just all over the place in this in this damn grocery store she bought like eight packages of italian sausage i feel like when i'm in the store i'm so conscious of Me like too everything and everyone around me and i hate being in people's way to a fault so i'm like moving myself over i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry oh my god i'm so sorry meanwhile there's like two people who are chit-chatting it up and they're parallel parks like next to each other in the middle of the aisle but the thing is we grocery shop at the same time that the elderly do and that's the problem here is because we're going at tuesday at like 11 a.m you know yeah so it's the crowd there they have nothing going on you know yeah. so they're gonna that's their outing and it's like God forbid you rush them during their outing, you know? Another thing that she didn't do but has done before, because now I'm just kind of like on a tangent. If you forgot something and you're nearing the end of your purchase, like you're being checked out and you forgot something, don't send your kid to go get it because they're going to get lost. They're under immense pressure. And don't leave your kid there to go get it yourself. What you're going to do is you're going to complete the purchase, walk your little cart out, go get whatever you forgot, and then you're just going to go to self-checkout or the express aisle and you're donezo bunzo and you're not holding up the entire line yeah people just don't really like they don't care about other people you know and with that being said 10 items or less means 10 items or less maybe maybe 15. i feel like whatever the number is is what you should follow you don't go in the line and be like oh i'm close enough it's like no like get out if you don't have 10 items every but people are busy people have appointments people have hemorrhoids it's just like we want to get out of the store i'm busy I have appointments and i have hemorrhoids and i still wait in line the holy trio the trifecta if you will um and then obviously respect the employees i just work at a grocery store so many people are fucking mean yeah. for no reason with the coupons and stuff i believe yeah oh my god and it's like i'm sorry if the coupon's not going in like i can honor it but you have to wait for a manager to come over because i just i simply can't put it in myself exactly why do you need a manager to do this because ma'am i'm i'm 16 underpaid overworked and i just i can't do it myself i'm sorry yeah um, and then obviously bring your carts back to cart return. I feel like that's not a hard ask. And I've seen far too many people still to this very day. I've not done it. do it. I've done it before. That's being honest. fucked up. You, you've been with me when I've done it. When you haven't brought the cart back to cart return? When we did it in the other day in Queens at that stop and shop. I mean, that weird parking garage. When we parked below on the bottom level and I put it in front of the car. I said, I can't do this. It was a nightmare experience. Oh, okay. Well, then you're a part of the problem. I am. But you know what, though? I'm truthful. And I'm honest. And I'm saying that because there's other campers out there that are looking themselves in the mirror and they're embarrassed. And they have to know that, that I stand with them. That, hey, we're not perfect people. But at least we're nice. Yeah, but you definitely shouldn't have done that. I know. And I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest. And I appreciate your honesty. So that's pretty much it for my take a hike. I hope that woman is having a wonderful time. I hope she got her rain check. Oh my God, that was the other thing. Like she had to go to the bottom of her bag 
like her giant reusable grocery bag to pull the meat back out to which, like yeah which express. isn't her fault but like just pick up the fucking pace lady it's like yeah, god she's like one thing at a time uh, yeah oh, looking like so goddamn annoying. leather there i said it i wanted to say a girl wears some sbf your chest looks like fucking burnt bacon i'm over it anyways i'm gonna take over now for take a hike because <laughs> okay. honestly i almost swung at her i did not no um, but I'm it was joking. annoying so my take a hike is a little different we got in the back of an uber the other day and the uber driver was so nice enough to have a pump of hand sanitizer behind both of the seats oh wait there, you're gonna say something else <laughs> so no not the smelly one that just happens so much no so i i go to pump the hand sanitizer and what comes out was so alarming not only did it come out with the velocity of a fighter pilot, <laughs> the viscosity of it was that of, I don't even know, boogers? <laughs> like, just straight, like, phlegm? And the smell was reminiscent of that 2020 COVID hand sanitizer that smelled like tequila and vodka. Mm -hmm. And I said, God damn it. During the pandemic, I accepted this sort of disrespect for my hand sanitizer. We were in desperate times then, but we've really come a long way since then. So why does this hand sanitizer smell like I just threw up tequila all over my hands? It was the consistency. I was rubbing it down to my my elbows because it was it was not soaking in the skin. It's on my shorts. It splattered on my chest. You know. All this. I you know what? I would have rather contracted whatever bacteria is on my hands than have to deal with this. I remember sitting in there next to you and I looked at the pump because there was one on each side. There was, there was two. And I his and hers. His and hers. I could tell from the scab that was forming around the nozzle, the nipple of the hand sanitizer, that it was gonna be that quality. So I omitted. I was like, I am all set. I don't need that. And you went for the pump and I said, he's going to regret that in five, four, three, two, now. I can always deal with like the, the need to really work it in. That's fine. It was the smell. So I went on a little deep dive for our campers here because if you've ever experienced that tequila vodka scent from a hand sanitizer, I was like, why? Why is that happening? Because it happened a lot in COVID, but this is, it's clearly still happening. So I read an article on Huffington Post by Anna Ramanan. Um, just to, I want to give her some some credit here because she gave me a lot of insights. So back during back during COVID, um, a lot of like the, the liquor distributors and like the distilleries had like a drop in sales because people weren't drinking as much, which is actually a lie. But they didn't have access to like shipments, right? So they were like, okay, there's a hole in the market. Like there needs to be more hand sanitizer available, and we have all of this stuff to make hand sanitizer because. Hand sanitizer is just ethanol. It's alcohol, right? right? Like that's the initial base. So I thought that's why these were smelling like vodka and tequila mm -hmm. because of they were working with the distilleries. But that's not even the case. Oh, I thought that's literally what you were telling us. So this is a quote from someone who works in like the distillery like realm basically you're taking the neutral spirit that you use to make vodka or tequila or another spirit and you use it as your basis to make hand sanitizer it's called neutral because it's neutral of color it's neutral of flavor and it's neutral of taste technically it should have zero aroma so there's three ways to make hand sanitizer, right? There's this like 1994 rule for topical antiseptic, anything that's ever been in a hand sanitizer before, like a Bath and Body Works, whatever, a PRL, they're following that kind of procedure. Then there was a temporary policy for preparation of certain alcohol-based hand sanitizers produced during the public health emergency COVID-19. That is like one direct sentence. Like that was for these kind of alcohol companies. Okay, so it was like an amendment. They were like, hey, this is the law to make You still have to sanitizers. follow this, but like kind of a loophole to get more. Okay. Or the third option is to submit a new drug application, which is like nobody is doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like one of these two. Yeah. So fragrant hand sanitizers have either been marketed since before COVID-19 under that 19 four rule or they don't comply with fda guidance that um, con said so basically if this hand sanitizer smells like absolutely anything like it shouldn't smell like anything if it smells like anything it should have been falling followed by that 1994 procedure so even if it's smelling like tequila that's technically a scent if it smells like anything it's an old kind of patent but like if you're following this new rule because of the COVID thing then it shouldn't smell like anything so if it is it's not good that's the whole point 
right? Wait, it's not, so it doesn't work? <clears throat> so it doesn't work. I don't want to say it doesn't work, but it's not to the standard that it was supposed to be oh, at. wow. And that goes for like anything that has any sort of scent made in that time frame. It's like, then it's not up to standard. Okay, so quick question then. So the, like what you were talking before, um, Bath and Body Works ones with the little beads in it, the cucumber melon is my personal favorite. Is that not working up to par? Um, no, it's technically labeled as like a hand sanitizer. It's maybe not as strong as other ones. I think that's the point. Like the more alcohol, the better, right? Because gotcha. it's killing more germs. So you're taking a risk there, but it's still made under like the appropriate regulations. Also, not them using all those microplastics for no reason. I love those little pebbles, but they're not good for the environment, I know. My second thought, there's a company from Pennsylvania. They make vodka. It's called Fabers, and I love it. It was like a great, cheaper alternative to Tito's. Great quality, locally sourced. Love it. And it's a really simple bottle with like a brown, it almost looks like a paper bag kind of um, like material. Mm -hmm. And they did the same thing where they started making hand sanitizers. But what they weren't doing is, was changing anything about the bottle. They were selling hand san sanitizer in the vodka bottle that said Faber on it. Oh, weird. Because I remember walking into the grocery store during the pandemic and I was like, why are they selling hard liquor here? And it said Faber really big and then smaller. It said like hand sanitizer. I was like, somebody's going to drink this thinking it's vodka. And I wonder if anybody did. Probably. So anyway, I just wanted to bring up that little anecdote. Gotcha. Well, guys, if you're spilling the hand sanitizer and it smells like vodka or tequila like it did back in COVID, it's not good. It's not good. And don't be a bitch at the grocery store. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle kitchen. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we share what we're crushing on, what we're loving, who needs to be highlighted in excellence here at Camp Shady Birch. Mm. Should I go first? Please do. Okay, so my crush of the week is kind of sticking with the theme of the last segment with tequila. Um, it's a Pico shot. Okay, <laughs> I love that. So earlier this week, we were at a bar and they were serving not pickleback shots. It's a Picoback shot. So you get a shot of tequila and instead of like a lime or whatever, it's the juice of pico de gallo. Mm. So think about like that tomato, cilantro, onion, all that kind of marinating. What's the juice of that? Do a little shot of tequila, chase it with a shot of pico. I thought it was divine. I thought it was fantastic. I saw it and I was like, wait, that's so crazy, but I already thought it was going to be good. And it cuts the taste of tequila. So crazy. And we've talked about this a lot. Like, you know, we already approved the chicken tender chaser. Yeah. Okay. Chicken tender chaser was incredible. The pico back shot. This is something I've added to my repertoire. So do you think that they, because I looked at it and it really didn't look like anything was in it. Do you think they just like sifted it and collected all the juices or did they blend it? Yeah, no, I think they did that because I think it was just a sifted because it wasn't blended. It was just the juice and like pico is wet. And you don't want juice like all up in your taco. No, I think they probably just like strain it a little bit. They keep that for the shots and then like the, then the pico is like perfect because then the, the tacos don't get wet. And that's such a good idea because then you're not wasting it. Exactly. And it is so flavorful. And that cilantro and the onion, it really cuts the taste of tequila. I thought it was amazing. This is a really fun party thing you guys can do at parties. If you're doing shots of tequila, people are going to be like, wait, what the hell? But they're going to love it. It's so fun. It was shocking because we saw it written on the wall. Yeah. Literally, it was written on the wall. And we were like, what the hell? Like, that's so dumb. And then you and Emma were like, wait, should we be crazy right now and do it? And we did. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. Like, like the pico shot is like the cousin of the pickleback shot and the pickleback shot is like oh like i'm the best oh the pickle yeah pickleback shot mm -hmm. yeah like that cousin's like the cool cousin and then this is like the quiet cousin where like he's he's artsy and he's so different but then he ends up pulling the chicken tenor girl it's like how mm -hmm. did you get the highest girlfriend in school because he's interesting because yeah. he's dynamic and he's hot too, but like in a in a more quiet way. He's a breakout star. He's a breakout star, a blockbuster success. So after all this discussion of shot chasers in the last couple episodes, I went online. I was like, what are other creative chasers that I just haven't been doing? Oh, this is fine. And they surveyed a bunch of like college students. I'm like, they know best. Yeah. So number one, I came up with this one. Okay. Because I want to contribute my own. I want to do a sloppy Joe chaser. Oh, oh, like a, okay. Explain. Like a little slider. All right. Like shot, chase it. Because a sloppy joe is such a dynamic flavor profile that I feel like I could really be tricked into thinking I didn't take a shot. Mm. And I just want, honestly, selfishly, I just want more sloppy joes in my life. You've never even had a sloppy joe. 
Uh, I think I have when I was younger. Let's do it this week because it would be so easy to use Beyond like ground beef and do it because Sloppy Joe's, what is it, you guys? Is it barbecue? Like, who is she? She's so fucking creepy, but she's so fucking good. Sloppy Josephina. Sloppy Josephina. You get two Martin's potato rolls, okay? Golly potato. You're going to grill them up a little bit. Get them a little crispy, a little buttery. And then you're going to layer that Sloppy Joe on there. Oh, my God. With some crispy crowns. Fuck me up. That's so good. I'm craving it. So that's number one. Wait, the manwich. We can get the manwich sauce. That's, the that's man- vegetarian, right? Exactly. It's can just, I have that? Exactly. It's just you add your ground beef. It's like hamburger out there. <sighs> Nothing to do with the meat. Oh my God. Suddenly we'll have salad. to just check. We'll definitely check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited about that. I like that. What's the next? Um, This is so great, guys. A ring pop. Just have a ring pop on. Uh, okay. Shot. In the, <laughs> covers the whole mouth. Whole mouth feel. Because it's kind of covering the whole mouth. Okay. People were doing it. They were like, it's really great. And it's kind of hot. Hot girl. Hot girl. All right. Would you try it, please, before you knock it? Oh, I, I'll try anything before I knock it. One person wrote it and said, I always just bring around Listerine mouth spray. That's so she takes a shot. And she goes, Ew. It's gone. The flavor is gone. Or cut the middleman and just do shots of Rumpelmans. Yeah, exactly. You can do a shot of Rumpelmans and it literally tastes like Christmas. I love it. I think it tastes like Listerine. What if you take a shot and you chase it with the Listerine sheets? Remember the little ones that would be like taped that dissolved on your tongue? I think they still make them. I feel like your mouth wouldn't know what to do and it would probably be a disaster. That's too much. Oh my God. It would be That's actually the setting of a Five Gun commercial. Mm. They had someone take a shot of alcohol, put a Listerine mouth, and they film what happened inside. Exactly. And that's when they were like in that sensory deprivation pit of like gray metal balls. This is what it feels like to get fucked up. We're always talking about wanting to be in a Five Gun commercial. I'm going to make it there one day. One That's day. my heaven. What uh, is your camper crush of the week? Before we get to my oh, camper crush, I was just going to say, th- what? what's the craziest thing I chase with? Oh, I used to chase with um, Taco Bell hot sauce packets. And you're going to shit on um, the Listerine spray? Only because I feel like you're not chasing it with anything. Like you dead ass need a chaser. Oh, Otherwise you wanna, you're you burning. Sw- just say you want the swallow. You need the swallow. It's burning the esophagus. Yeah, you're right. So the Taco Bell with tequila and you just squirt it right in your mouth. Great. It makes sense because it's kind of along along the lines of the Pico. It's just yeah. kind of like a, a really impactful flavor. I think of all these we talked about, though, chicken tender, obviously, number one. I cannot stop it. But really, the Pico shot, I would rather that than a pickleback shot. We should do on Patreon. We should do that and like test out the little shot things. I'm not taking six shots on Patreon. Actually... I'm taking six shots on Patreon. Yeah, or we don't have to do them back to back. We can literally film them and then compile them into a video and like give our full review. No, let's do them back to back. It's more fun. Okay. Oh, God. All right. We'll let you know when that's up. Yeah, we'll let you know when that's up. Can't guarantee it's going to be immediately. But speaking of that, we just did film something for Patreon. We did. Okay, so we have that one that just dropped. And then we have another one where we got drunk and did a cookie review. Exactly. And then um, complained about packaging. That's a good one, too. It's a lot more of just us bitching on there, if you're interested. Anyways, stop plugging the Patreon, (laughs) Zachariah. It's so shameless and it's ridiculous. Jonathan, what is your camp crush of the week? My camp crush of the week. Tell me. Is a conversation pit. Bring them back. Bring them back. I feel like I don't need to explain it. But for those of you who don't know, it was really popular back in like the 1950s to 1960s, died out around the 70s. But it was like in a living room, they would have a little sunken down pit where all of the the built in chairs, it was like a giant circle sofa. And it could be square, it could be oval, it could be circular, and everyone was just kind of facing each other. And it encouraged conversation. Well, that's because back in the 50s, everybody was creating bars in their house. Like you wanted a bar, you wanted to have a cigarette, you wanted to have people to come over to chat with. Like nowadays, we're either FaceTiming or we meet out. Like no one's ever like hosting. Whatever happened to hosting? Someone host us, please. We want to go somewhere and enjoy your living room, okay? Not April listening to this. Like, bitch, I host you all the time. Oh, well, April, April's a hostess. Yes. Yeah, she is. And I honestly don't even love hosting. So like I want someone else to (laughs) love i love a friend that loves to host okay back to conversation pets okay yes you're totally right everybody was hosting back then and it is what i explained earlier so one of the most influential not the only but one of the most influential conversation pets was installed in 1962 in twa flight center at jfk international airport right here in new york city baby still open yeah i think that's so crazy but then 
in the 70s, you know what happened? What? People stopped talking? More and more televisions in the living room became popular. So I'm telling you, television stopped the conversation. They did, because then everyone started designing their living room around a television. Wait, that is... Guys... Everybody thank Counselor Jonathan for bringing that information because I thought that was really good. You're yeah. really teaching the campers here. Thank you. And they have seen a rise in popularity. Um, I do follow a lot of interior design accounts. And someone did talk about during COVID, a lot of people started like renovating and figuring out how to put a conversation pit in their homes. But it didn't feel the same because all the pictures that I've been looking at of more recent ones aren't in the middle of the living room, but are like off to the side and again facing the television. So it's not a conversation pit it's just a pit yeah and you don't want a, an empty hot tub in the middle of your living room do you oh my god that could be fun just fill it up with water yeah let's have more indoor hot tubs that are like ground level yeah so you fall into them so then okay that's the other thing people were saying they stopped becoming popular because people sitting down at a drunk party in the 1950s would get kicked in the head i can see that happening yeah or like the little kid wants to come sit and then knocks her teeth out like it's really not safe okay well then here's the other thing is we get a conversation pit and people can't bring their kids over i'm so sorry it's a danger to the kids we already have a permanent installment in the middle of our living room yeah and if you were to put like a, like a handrail around it it's like oh now it looks like an eyesore what? yeah then it's like a pool what is this a carousel and we can make it ada compliant i'll put a little ramp in yeah that's it's accessible big, for everyone it's a big pit but we're ready yeah. for it but i think um i think they're so fun i want to sit there with a cheese plate and a little and a little shrimp pie and just kind of enjoy the conversation. I think it's because I saw Zillow yesterday that I made the video about and it was just all like that era. No, I love that. I feel like every time I've ever seen one, I've always wanted to do that, but I want to have a dirty martini. I want to have an unfiltered cigarette and I want to have an unfiltered conversation yes. about my neighbors yes. with my friends. So let's bring it back. If you have one campers, let us know. We're thinking about installing one on in Camp Shady Birch. Yeah. We're just looking for a location. It's probably going to be outdoor and it's the base of it is just going to be picnic tables upside down. So Oh yeah, super Super we don't have the budget, everybody. you guys. Hi. Yeah. We're doing what we can. Everybody start bringing your pillows down. <laughs> Throw them in the bottom of the picnic tables. <laughs> Anyways, that was Crush of the Week. What song's been stuck in your head all week? <laughs> Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. Hey, everybody. Grab grab your viola and your... And your recorder. What do people play? I don't know. Guitars? Skin flute? Uh, you always make that disgusting joke and I hate it every time. Mm. Anyways, guys, this is the part of the show where we share song recommendations that we want you to listen to this week that are going to be available on Spotify, on our playlist, and on YouTube linked in the episode description. You already know the drill. Wait. I'm going to go first. Please do. Because I'm so incredibly excited to share this with you guys. Yes. Two of my icons have partnered up to make a song. A lot of you have told me about it. I'm already aware. The last episode was already recorded, so I had to share it this week. Guys, the song is called I'll Be Here. I'll Be Here by Colby Calais and no, none other than Cheryl Crow. What a duo. My iconic duo. The song is so great, you guys. So a little bit of a message about the song. Okay, so she goes... Um, Colby Kelly says, I wrote I'll Be Here with Brett James at my house in California 13 years ago. Um, we wanted to write a song, an uplifting song for anyone to sing to whoever they love, including singing to yourself, because that's important too. Over the years, we recorded many, many variations of it, but this one is the original and my favorite and how it was always meant to sound. My heart is so happy and in awe that my lovely friend Cheryl Crow is singing it with me. Her legendary voice and calm tone so perfectly share the message of this nurturing song with me. It really is like a song, you guys, about like loving. I, to me, it's, it registers as friend because it's like they're kind of singing to each other. The video is so great. They're in these like vintage Jeeps and vintage trucks, split screen. Oh my God, like you and I right now on YouTube. Literally split screen. And at the very end, they like meet up at this like all girls hang out, like glamping experience. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey girl, hey, how are you? But like, I'm going to like sing a little bit of the chorus because I feel like it's not really giving until you know the kind of message around it. Okay, you guys ready? Ready. I'm never going to let you down. I'm always going to build you up. When you're feeling lost, I will always find you love. Never gonna walk away, always gonna have your back. And if, if nothing else, you can always count on that. 
when you need I can't do the rest of it. But it so <laughs> the sound the song sounded really like reminiscent. I was like, I've heard this before. So this song initially was draw like came out by Colby Calais in twenty fourteen. Why re release it? The original was like this weird ASPCA commercial. Like, okay, like I'm sorry, like Obviously, it's good that like she's supporting the ASPCA, but it was like an ad. But like her song, it was like a music video ad. It was oh, weird. Oh yeah. And but this is the version that she really intended it to be. Okay. So I don't know why this moment is the moment that she's really putting it out. But we're so glad she did. But I'm so glad. And the video, guys, this video is really it's giving Camp Shady Birch vibes. Mm -hmm. Like this song feels like kiss at the kiss at the end of summer. Feels like Camp Shady Birch. I'm really obsessed with these two women. Then we went on a deep dive of Colby Calais, and she has hit after hit after hit. I'm going to make that a TikTok or something because people need to remember mm -hmm. the catalog of music that Colby Calais has brought to us because I'm very, I'm very outspoken about Sheryl Crow and I need to be sticking up for Colby Calais more. And I love, she was the very first live performer I ever saw in my entire life was Colby Calais. What did you think about the song? Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought the music video was so sweet. I really enjoyed it. I do think that the, she took a screen grab from this music video and made that her new YouTube cover photo, her like icon. And it does look like she was released on like the new cast of Survivor. She has this yeah. bandana look. I'm not loving it, but I do love her. Um, before I wrap this up, I do have two fun facts. Um, one about each artist. Okay. Which artist do you want to go first? Uh, uh, Cheryl Crow. We'll end with Colby. Cheryl Crow is going to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in November. I love it. Rock and Roll. I don't know why I said Rock and Roll. Get it. Rock and Roll. It's not. It's Rock and Roll. I don't know if I said Rock and Roll. I never said that. I'm mortified. Sandwich, edit that out. Sandwich, edit that out, Sandwich. Okay, so that's her. <laughs> I'm over this. And then Colby Calais. <laughs> Some of you may know this, but she auditioned for American Idol twice. Oh, I didn't know that. She got rejected twice. First time, she didn't even make it to the, the judges. Second time, she made it. She sang for the judges, Bubbly, her original song. They said no, but she said, I was shy. I was nervous. I didn't look the greatest. I wasn't ready for it. I was glad when I auditioned that they said no, which honestly, she's probably a bigger star now for it that she didn't even get on the show because those shows have like a curse that like rarely do people actually make it out of those shows famous. Like where's Fantasia? Stop it. Fantasia is going to be in the remake of the color purple. So you're going to be eating your words when that comes out. Oh, okay. Anyways, I love you, Colby. And I love you, Cheryl. What's your song of the week? So my song, my camp song is Olivia Rodrigo's All American Bitch. You love a teen heartthrob. And I'm actually, there's going to be two songs. So if you guys haven't heard her new album as, of the, as we record this, it just came out uh, a couple of days ago. And the song goes a little something like this. Sing it. Forgive and I forget. I know my age and I act like it. Got what you can't resist. I'm a perfect all-American bitch. Does it sound familiar? Um, I know that it does because I saw the TikTok, but what do you think it sounds like? So a lot of people are saying that it sounds very similar, and I agree, to Miley Cyrus's 2008 hit, Start All Over. Okay, but how does that one go? Out of the fire and into the fire again, you make me want to forget. So you can hear it in my version, right? But you can listen to both of them back to back. I think they are very... Very, 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 very similar. This has happened to her before. And this has happened to her before. So, uh, and I'm not coming for her. I'm really just pointing it out. The other thing sounds is... sounds like you're coming for her. If it was sampled, I'm hoping it was sampled, but I don't think that it was. It never is with her. She always gets like legally like sued by Taylor, by Paramore. So, like... yes, you're jumping out of the train. So, if you guys don't remember, Good For You was a sample of Paramore's misery business. She didn't say it was a sample. She got sued by Paramore and she had to credit Paramore for like writing the song. Same thing happened with Taylor Swift on two tracks. So this is technically would be her fourth track. That sounds similar to something else. And um, New Year's Day and Cruel Summer were uh, One Step Forward, Three Steps Back and Deja Vu were her songs that then she did legally get sued and had to give Taylor Swift credit, like writing credit on her album. But as I'm sorry, as she should, it was too similar. I 100% I agree. There's a difference between getting, you know, the rights to sample it and then just putting something out that sounds 
cookie cutter like it. And I, I know people are like, I don't hear, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Or there's only so many chords. I understand there's only so many chord progressions and that that's why mashups are so easy because of like the tempo of shit. But it's it's way too similar. It's way too close for comfort here. I wish you'd be a little bit more spicy and be like, I'm calling her out. Well, I call just, her to the carpet. I just got my Instagram back. I'm not trying to get canceled. Olivia, get your ass here to Camp Shady Birch. And I want you to explain to the campers why you're stealing music. I don't even know why I'm involving myself. Actually, Olivia, keep going, girl. Love you. I yeah, actually do like, like her. I like her too. She's like 20 her. years old, but I just wish, and I'm not fully blaming her. She has a whole team. Like she's hella famous right now. Like the, why are we not just handling this from the jump? The one that she got sued by or like how to give rights to Taylor, she was very aware of though. Like, so it's like, let's not. And she was friends with Taylor and now they don't talk. Well, apparently Taylor like, put her heart hands up at her performing at the VMA. So, oh, so all's forgiven. Yeah. Well, you know how that works, you guys. Yeah. Remember went to the VMAs last year and they invited me the day before this one came. They're like, can you come? And I was like, someone dropped out. They People love to invite me last minute after someone drops out. And I was like, no guys, I'm not coming this year. Yeah, we're first pick kind of girls. Well, I just didn't have an outfit and I was like, I'm not gonna go there looking stupid. And everyone that went this year looked amazing. Yeah. So congrats to everyone that went, we didn't go. Anyway. Um, I'd rather be here with you guys. Yeah. Let's have our own VMAs. Yeah, let's have a camp VMAs. <gasps> Campers, start practicing your chord progressions. There's only so many. <laughs> We're going to in your a vocals. So, and we will be running it past the legal system to make sure it's copyright and Olivia Rodrigo's going to sue us now. <laughs> Campers, don't steal her music because she's in hot water. Anyways, that's all we have for today's episode. We love you so much. We always say that, but we really do. We really appreciate everybody that listens to us. Share this podcast, please, with someone you love. If you haven't rated us yet, we'd love you to rate us and review us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you listen. Give us a cute little review. It really tickles our tits when we read them. But um, seriously, thank you so much for listening. Also, if you have any stories that you want to contribute to Trail Mix, you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com, go to the little writing tab, we can read your stories on an upcoming episode. We have a couple already recorded, but we have a lot more coming and that's that fire is still burning. But I think that's all we have for announcements, right? Mm -hmm. And with that being said, lights, lights out campers. campers.